We're gonna go deep into advanced wrestling strength training techniques and we're gonna start right now. What's up everybody, it's Dane Miller from Garagestrength.com and if this is your first time to the channel and you're interested in becoming an explosive freak, you wanna take those weight room gains and apply it directly over to the mat, you wanna become a better wrestler, you wanna be more explosive, make sure that you like, you subscribe, and you ring that notification bell so we can help you become a champion. So understanding energy usage is one of the key components behind understanding wrestling strength training and advanced wrestling strength training techniques and so what we've got to do is go right into what are those specific energy systems that you're going to be utilizing when you're training wrestlers or when you're actually competing in the sport of wrestling and so if we can go right off the bat we're talking about an anaerobic a lactic energy system when we are discussing that we're thinking about anything under 15 to 20 seconds so think about wrestlers who might be on the prowl they're sort of just meandering around the mat and then all of a sudden you know they hit they get heavy on the head they hit a blast double and maybe there's a little bit of a scramble 15 to 20 seconds that's where we're going to be utilizing that a lactic system now when we get into the aerobic oxidative system okay so this is what you can think about as that big foundation behind all of this energy usage is the aerobic oxidative is going to be anything utilized over two minutes so think about the collegiate level at the international level wrestling for multiple minutes at a given time that energy that heightened state of awareness that you have for a longer period is going to be supported by the aerobic oxidative system but with that being said it's supporting the anaerobic a lactic and then it's also supporting the anaerobic glycolysis system so the glycolysis system is typically going to kick in around 20 to 30 seconds and it's going to be utilized from 20 to 30 seconds all the way up to two minutes and so it's important to realize that not one of these systems is better than the other instead they're all sort of working together they're all supporting one another and they're all utilized in different regards and if this system is very very efficient for a wrestler it can support the a lactic system but if the a lactic system is suffering and the individual is incredibly weak they're not strong they're not explosive this doesn't matter and it's the same thing with anaerobic glycolysis if you're in a tie up for 45 to 60 seconds and you're scrambling like crazy if this system's really good but you're really weak in certain positions this system can't perform to the level that you need it to perform and that in turn is going to lead to some other issues on the mat. And so that's going to take us immediately into the elements of strength training. Stay tuned to the rest of this video. But if you like what you hear today, make sure that you download our free wrestling program. So we've got a program that we put together free specifically for you guys to see how we piece all this information together. You can click on the link down below in our description. You're going to head over to garagestrength.com. You're going to put in your email. And when you put in your email, you will then be sent the wrestling program for free. So that's going to be two different weeks of training that you can utilize. You can practice and you can see how we do things on that generic basis. And then that's going to help you in your wrestling goals and so that's going to take us immediately into understanding the elements of strength that you need when you're on the mat so we know if we can think about John Smith or Jordan Burroughs Kyle Snyder Jaden Cox any of these animals right we know they're all extremely explosive just phenomenally explosive in wrestling you've got to be explosive from a bilateral perspective you've got to be explosive from a unilateral perspective and then that's going to lead into that next key element. We know that you need absolute strength. So if you can think about heavyweights like Nick Gwizdowski or, or even in that upper class like Jaden Cox, like Kyle Snyder, these are guys that are going to need quite a bit of absolute strength. They're going against opponents that are 120 kilos, that are 100 plus kilos, that can apply a ton of force back to you. So your opposition is going to be applying a ton of force that means you have to have a lot of absolute strength now if we're talking about the lighter weight classes that absolute strength might transition from absolute strength down to a little bit more of a focus on relative strength so that pound for pound strength and i would typically say around 74 kilos or around anywhere about 180 pounds 
down from there is where you're gonna be focusing a little bit more on that pound for pound strength. But at the end of the day, absolute strength and relative strength can really, really feed off of one another. Now, we also know that you've gotta have a ton of endurance. You've gotta be able to hit something big. If you're in the blood round and you're, you've gotta win in overtime to get to that point where you can become an All-American, we know that you're gonna need that endurance in overtime. We know that you're gonna need that endurance late in the match so that you can tap into your explosiveness, you can tap into your absolute strength. And then finally, one of those key strength elements is going to be grip. And grip can be utilized in any of these different energy systems. And so it's important to know you've got to be explosive. You've got to have absolute and relative strength. You've got to have really good endurance and you have to have that grip work. The grip work is going to transfer that weight room strength directly onto the mat. So now that we've understood a basic introduction to our energy usage, and then we can understand those key elements behind wrestling. Now we can go into what the interrelationship is between all of these energy systems and the elements. And so that is going to help us really start to understand how all these moving pieces really come together. And that's where we can start to see, okay, anaerobic alactic, we can think about technical coordination. We can think about being coordinated as quickly as possible. And that's a key component behind wrestling. The wrestler who coordinates their muscles the fastest is very likely gonna be the one who's going to dominate if their skill level is equal to their opponent. So if we have somebody who has equal skill level, the one who can coordinate their muscles the quickest will win and so that's a key factor here is that we've got to understand technical coordination like olympic lifts like olympic lifting variations variations in reflexive movement all factor into coordination they all factor into that anaerobic alactic system as well as relative and absolute strength a lot of people forget a lot of relative work and a lot of absolute strength work will come together in the anaerobic alactic system and that's also going to feed power development. So think about plyometric work, think about heavier cleans and even doing contrast training. So maybe you do a heavy back squat double, you rest for two to three minutes and then you do some explosive jumps, that's power development and that's all gonna be factored into the anaerobic alactic system. When we get into the aerobic oxidative, we can think of interval based training, we can think of long duration work on the bike, long duration work going for a jog, long duration work if we're on the rower. Interval based training could be hill sprints, walk down, sprint again, and you do that for 30 straight minutes. Now interval based training can beat you up a little bit more than that long duration work. And then we also can factor in, there's ways in the weight room that we can even train that aerobic oxidative work. There's different variations of sets that you can utilize with big movements that can be very, very, very exhausting and challenging that will feed into the aerobic oxidative. But one of the big key factors here is that even doing long duration work, let's say once a week, you do 30 minutes on the bike at a decent RPMs, that can improve your ability to recover inside the match, okay? Now, if we do that too much, your anaerobic alactic system might start to take a nosedive and your anaerobic glycolysis system might start to take a nosedive. So it's important that we start to see how all these things factor together. Then we go into that anaerobic glycolysis system. Absolute and relative strength can dramatically improve from working inside the anaerobic glycolysis system. And that will, in turn, feed the a lactic system and this could be you're doing sets of five on the back squat you're doing sets of 10 on on pull-ups but also you might be doing a set of five power cleans or full cleans or one box cleans you're doing a set of five that will in turn feed here even if we're talking about bodybuilding work we can work on any structural integrity we need to you know gain a little bit of muscle mass because we're pathetically weak we can do some simple bodybuilding work which in turn will actually improve our aerobic oxidative system. And because you're gaining muscle mass, it will also potentially lead to higher power output. 
And then finally, again, some more work in the weight room. This could be similar to the absolute relative and that bodybuilding work, but you could do 15 singles on a power clean every 45 seconds and you do that for 15 minutes straight. Well, now all of a sudden you're feeding a lactic system and you're feeding the aerobic system. And so we've got to see how all of this stuff works together. And that's gonna take us into that next key aspect here, which is comprehending weak points in the individual wrestler. So a lot of guys will just wanna hammer the aerobic oxidative. Oh, you know, conditioning's king. Well, conditioning is king, but if you are pathetically weak and you have no power output, you're not gonna need that conditioning because you're gonna get decked in the first period. Same thing with the glycolysis system. If you don't have that ability to scramble for 30 to 40 seconds, it's not gonna matter. That stuff's not gonna matter. So we've gotta be able to analyze and sit there and look at the best wrestlers of all time. Look at some of the best wrestlers that the United States has had. Take someone like John Smith, okay? Arguably the best American wrestler ever if we're talking about Olympic titles and world titles. If you think about watching John Smith and how he would just sort of be on the prowl, very low intensity, and then all of a sudden he'd hit that quick low leg single and he'd just explode, right? That is him utilizing that alactic system and he was so fast that he's able to hit that single and capitalize on it and he might have scrambled for 10 to 15 seconds and then it was done because he scored a whole bunch of points. Same thing with Jordan Burroughs. You see someone like Jordan Burroughs and they sort of look like in the second period of the international style wrestling, he, he looks as though he's gassed out, he's not doing anything and then all of a sudden he just turns it on and he turns it on because his aerobic oxidative system is supporting his alactic system. These are wrestlers, John Smith, Jordan Burroughs, that have phenomenal coordination. They have phenomenal power output, okay? But they also do have that oxidative baseline. You can watch Burroughs and what he does in training or, or, or Jaden Cox or Kyle Snyder quite a bit and, and same with Gwiz. These are all guys that really can do a lot of work here with the anaerobic glycolysis system and it sort of feeds both of these. But if we're dealing with high school wrestlers, so think about you have a high school wrestler who comes in. We had a kid here, PA State champ, NCAA All-American at NC State, Pete Renda, absolute phenom, absolute animal. He had tremendous amounts of power. He was yoked, right? An absolute physical specimen. Now, one area that he lacked later on was sort of figuring out what was the best way for him to improve his gas tank while still capitalizing on the two areas that he was really, really good at. Genetically, he was more predisposed to be in the alactic and the glycolytic system. He was not as good with the oxidative system and that created some flaws inside of his matches. And the key is got to be based around the strength coach and around the wrestling coach and analyzing, hey, We've got another kid who, you know, we talk about Pete. Pete is extremely explosive. He's extremely coordinated. He's got great absolute and relative strength. He's great in the weight room, but he's got to, we've got to figure out the best way to improve his oxidative system. Is it through intervals? Well, that beat him up. It made him really tired. Is it through long duration work? Very likely. And now all of a sudden you can start to troubleshoot. Think about some other guys. We had another guy here who was a phenomenal wrestler locally went on and placed at states twice in triple a he could barely bench press 135 pounds he was very skilled technically and he had a massive gas tank so one of the key factors was his aerobic oxidative system was phenomenal his anaerobic alactic system was you know it was okay on the mat it was solid but his anaerobic glycolytic system was pathetic he would lose simple scrambles because he had no strength. He could barely bench press 135 pounds the first year that he placed at States. So we had to sit there and say, all right, we've got to improve his absolute and relative strength. We've got to improve his glycolysis system so that he can have longer scrambles. And in turn, that will feed into his relative strength, into his power and into his technical coordination. So we could utilize this and analyze this was the weak point to improve here and we knew that this needed minimal amounts of work. So you've got to be able to step back as the coach and recognize that these are the three key areas that all the athletes need, that all the wrestlers need. These are the key areas that they need as far as strength training is concerned, as far as the elements of strength. And then you can take that step 
and then you analyze individual by individual and you can try to improve their weakness so that they can dominate on the mat. So make sure that you understand those basic energy systems. You understand the strength components, the strength elements behind wrestling. You know the interrelationship between all of these different things and you comprehend the weak points of each individual athlete. And one final thing that I'll say is that no matter what, grip strength, okay? So if we can start to think about grip, grip strength can play into the alactic system by doing things as simple as you know, plate flips, explosive plate flips. It can factor into the anaerobic glycolysis system by doing, you know, fat grip hammer curls for sets of 30. And then finally, it can factor into the oxidative system by doing long duration farmer's walks. So when you're struggling, always go back to improving the grip is paramount to all three of these energy systems. And it's that key component to mat strength. So if you need help piecing together an entire program, you can head over to garagestrength.com. You can click on the link down below. It'll take you to our landing page for wrestling-based training. And we've created our first 12-week off-season program to help you become a better wrestler. It's the Vulcan Wrestling Training Program. It's gonna help you coordinate all these things, dominate all those elements so that you can end up on top of the podium. If you want more information about wrestling-based training, you can click on this card right here. Until next time, guys, peace.